Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. My name is Michael, and I'm just going to say it right away, right at the beginning here. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. So you might have guessed by the title of this episode, I am coming down with a cold. I can feel my throat getting a little bit hoarse, a little bit painful, and it kind of hurts when I have to swallow. And I probably don't have much time before I'll be unable to record a podcast episode today. So let's get this done quickly. (laughs) So I used a few good expressions there, which I will be doing uh, for the rest of this episode as well, because I'll be talking about getting sick, which is not the cheeriest of topics. It's not the happiest topic. But it is something that we all need to talk about because it does happen to all of us, no matter how healthy we are, and it may happen to you at the worst possible time, as it always seems to, right? It always happens at the worst time, when you've got so much going on and then you get sick. And who knows, maybe one day you might even be in England or America or somewhere and you get sick and you have to use this kind of vocabulary to help you get some medicine or tell people what your symptoms are. And hopefully that doesn't happen, but it's always good to prepare. I like to say, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's one of the phrases I love to live by. But yes, as I said, I have come down with a cold. So this phrase here, to come down with a cold, it's a phrasal verb, come down, and we always say with as well. So come down with a cold, come down with the flu. It just means I have got sick. I've come down with something. Don't think too much about what that means, like come down. Just understand come down with a cold means you got a cold. Really, really common way to say that. I also said I'm feeling a bit under the weather. You may have heard this before. This just means something's not right. I'm not feeling quite right. I'm feeling under the weather, a little bit sick. Maybe I'm a little bit sad, it could be as well. But keep in mind, this is not for serious things. If you have a really serious problem where maybe you need surgery or something, that is not under the weather. Under the weather is for little things like having a cold. So as I said, I will be talking today about lots of vocabulary. I'll be talking about the symptoms you might have when you get sick, how to treat an illness, what you can do to get better, and things like that. Don't forget though, if you're not already subscribed, you may not know that I make YouTube videos for these podcasts as well. You may be watching on YouTube already, in which case this doesn't make any sense, but I know most of you listen to the audio. And to be fair, I do put a lot of time into the audio, and this is a primarily audio-based podcast, but if you want to watch the video and maybe there'll be some things on the screen as well to help you, then don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, which you can find by searching Level Up English Podcast on YouTube. Help me grow my subscribers over there. That will be very appreciated. Think of it like a present, a get well present for me. (laughs) Also, if you want to join a email community of thousands of people, then you might consider signing up. So if you go to my website, levelupenglish.school, and go right to the bottom of the page, there will be an area where you can sign up for my email newsletter. And now this is not just some boring email newsletter that you don't care about. My goal is to make it useful and make you look forward to receiving it as well. So the first thing you will get when you sign up is five free lessons from Level Up English. So you can just sign up and get these free lessons sent to your email right away. And that's a good bonus, a good thank you for signing up. And then twice a month on a Thursday, there will be an email in which I send a mini English lesson and some motivation for you as well. It's also the best place to go if you want to hear updates from me, like new projects I'm working on, offers and and that kind of stuff. So if that's interesting for you, you could also go down to your podcast description on your app and there should be a direct link 
to sign up to those emails. But hopefully I will see you there. But yes, let's get back to the topic of being sick. I don't feel great today, so please bear with me if I seem a little bit out of it. If someone seems out of it, it's like they're not in their normal state of mind. They're kind of a bit dizzy, they're talking about weird things. They seem a bit out of it today. Out of it. And I think I do. I feel a little bit dizzy and I know I'm going to be worse tomorrow, which is a bit annoying. But I suppose that's one reason to record today. You know, I can record my podcast today and maybe spend some time tomorrow editing, relaxing. You know, no worries, right? Maybe. But yeah, it was a little bit annoying because I wonder if this is a British kind of culture thing. I don't know, British personality. Let me know if you would do the same thing. But I was on the train a couple of days ago and a girl came and sat behind me and was coughing so much. You know, I could tell she was really sick. It sounded horrible. I was really, really annoyed at her, honestly. You know, I don't get annoyed very easily, but when people who are really obviously sick get on the train and start coughing everywhere, that's that's when I get annoyed. That's the best way to cheese me off, you know, <laughs> annoy me, basically. And I thought about it for a while. Oh, should I move? I don't want to be awkward. I don't want to seem rude. And I was thinking about it for too long, maybe five minutes or so. And also there weren't really any more seats available uh, where I could sit on my own. I would have to sit next to someone else, which, you know, in the UK, that is a horrible thing to do. Everyone loves sitting on their own, right? <laughs> but eventually she didn't stop coughing. So I got up and moved after just a few minutes. And I kind of felt like, yeah, I move. That, that will show you. And, you know, I don't think she really noticed. But sadly, I think I was deciding for too long. So I think the lesson that I will learn from this situation is if someone is coughing near me, just get up right away. Do not go near them. Just move instantly. Because if you don't, that might be, you know, it, who knows? It could be COVID. It could be one week of your life where you're in bed. Who knows what's going to happen? So I don't know, maybe you think I'm a bit weird for deciding for so long, like, why didn't you move right away? But yeah, I should have. I regret it. And I'm still very mad at that. I call her selfish girl. You, know, you shouldn't get on the train if you're that sick, right? But anyway, it's done now. I can't change it. So I thought I would transform this unfortunate experience into a podcast episode, into a lesson to help you guys learn. So I've already spoke about a few phrases that are useful, like come down with a cold, which means catch a cold, feeling under the weather, you're not feeling great. Uh, one interesting thing to mention is there's, there's a distinction between a cold and the flu, right? Just to explain, the flu is much worse, right? I think the main difference is cold usually is sore throat, blocked nose, maybe headache, but the flu might last longer and it's also associated with having a fever. That's where your temperature is really high and you have fatigue as well. There's another symptom. Fatigue is where you feel really weak. Your body feels weak and heavy and maybe you have aches all over your body. Your whole body is quite sore and painful. So the flu is much worse and a cold is generally a little bit more bearable, right? So who knows what this is? I think it's just a cold because I don't feel fatigued so much. I think I just have a cold, but I do tend to get the man flu. This is one phrase I wanted to share today, man flu. It's a little bit derogatory, which means it's kind of used to say like men are weak. Men are really bad with having an illness. But I do think there's some truth behind this because I see a lot of people where they have a cold, they feel a bit under the weather and they still do their normal stuff. They still, you know, they still work, they still go for a walk, they still do all this kind of stuff. Personally, I can't do any of that. You know, even this podcast is a little bit of an effort for me, right? But I get the man flu, which basically means a man's exaggerated response to getting sick. So I think the idea is if a woman gets a cold, it's like, oh, I don't feel great, but it's okay, whatever. 
And then sometimes if a man gets a cold, he will be like, oh, I feel horrible. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm dying. Please help me. And they really exaggerate the symptoms. I'm not saying it's true, but I am saying I think that happens to me because my friends get a cold. It doesn't seem to bother them too much. And then I get a cold and I stay in bed for the whole week. You know, just even like talking is horrible for me. So that's the man flu. I suffer from the man flu. It's kind of like a joke, right? <laughs> in terms of avoiding getting sick, I do try to do a lot to avoid catching a cold, avoid getting sick. I think many things such as working on your immune system is very good. You know, making sure you're eating a lot of vitamins and vegetables and all this good stuff. I feel is really good for a strong immune system. Of course, staying really hydrated is important. So if you're staying hydrated, you're drinking lots of water and fluids. And I think that's good when you're sick and just on a normal day, of course, right? To help your body cope with any viruses or infections or something like that. And here's one that I've been trying to focus on recently, which I read about in a book all about breathing. And this is breathing through your nose, right? So apparently, according to this book, your nose is really, really good at kind of filtering out viruses and illnesses, things like that. And if you breathe through your mouth, you're much more likely to catch a cold. So especially if you're in a crowded area, maybe breathing through your nose is going to help you a tiny bit more compared to through your mouth. You know, so it's something I try to do, but who knows if it really works, but there's, there's no harm in doing it, right? But yeah, now I want to talk about symptoms for a second. So I'm going to run through some symptoms about some symptoms that you might get when you have a cold, when you feel sick. And maybe we can talk about which one is the worst as well, because that is a debate I find interesting. But the thing that is usually the first sign that you're coming down with something is getting a scratchy throat. Scratchy throat. So this is kind of that feeling in your throat where it's like a little bit scratchy. It's not painful. It just feels a little bit like something's not right. You know, maybe when you swallow, it feels a bit strange. You know what I mean, right? It kind of feels like something's not right down here. So that's that can be called a scratchy throat. That might develop into something you might call like a horse. Your, your, your derogatory voice is a bit hoarse. Your throat is hoarse. I mentioned this word at the beginning, I think, didn't I? Horse, which is not the animal. It's H-O-A-R-S-E. O-A. And if you have a hoarse voice, this describes the kind of rough and deep sound of your voice, usually when you're sick, or it could also be when you've been shouting and talking too much. At the moment, I don't think I have a hoarse voice. I think I sound quite normal, but that's because it's the first day of my cold. So I'm sure tomorrow, or maybe the next day, I will be feeling a bit hoarse and I will not be in the right, you know, I, I won't have the right voice to record a podcast then. So it's good that I'm doing it today. If that continues to get worse, you might have like that girl on the train who is still Oh, it makes me so mad. <laughs> you might have a chesty cough. A chesty cough. So a chesty cough is like a, a really deep, strong, nasty cough. It's not just like clearing your throat. It's coming deep from your lungs. And you know a chesty cough from a normal cough because it sounds much worse. And it really sounds like they're sick. So if you think about a really horrible cough that just sounds horrible, yeah. You know, I'm, see, because I'm sick, I'm not thinking of the right words today, but I think you get what I'm saying, right? If it's a really sick, horrible sounding cough, we could say a chesty cough. Chesty from your chest. Usually, I think this comes later. So for me, at least, I will start a cold with a sore throat. And then towards the end of the illness, I might get the sniffles. The sniffles. This is kind of a cute word in a way, even though it sound, it's a bit disgusting, but the kind of word itself sounds cute. I guess it could be like a name, the name for your pet bunny rabbit, maybe. But if you get the sniffles, it's just like, 
me. You're, you're sniffing a lot. It's kind of light. It's, it's not too strong, right? But also you could say runny nose, which is a bit more disgusting, but you might get a runny nose and you have to keep blowing your nose and that's very annoying. It's not the worst, right? It's just sniffles, runny nose. I mean, people get that in the winter and it may not be connected to getting sick, but that's another symptom that you might get. I don't always get that though. I mean, very often these days, I seem to get a sore throat, but then my nose is fine, which I think is quite nice. Well, nice is not the right word, but it's less bad, isn't it? And one really good word, it's pretty good word for spoken English, but also written English, it's not too casual, is congested. It's a really useful word. I recommend learning this one if you don't know it, because if you're congested, that means you're blocked up. It could refer to your throat, I suppose, but usually it's more about your nose, right? Your nose gets blocked, you're congested. So you're congested, it's, it's, you speak a bit differently because everything's blocked and it just doesn't feel good. It's difficult to breathe, difficult to eat, right? And it's a really good word because it can also be used to describe other things. For example, traffic on the road. If there is congestion, which is the noun, that means there's a traffic jam on the road. I saw a few crashes on the weekend, unfortunately. And because of that, on the motorway, there was a lot of congestion. And then two days later, I got sick, and now I have congestion. Well, it's a little bit, so far anyway. Here's just a bonus one for any of you more advanced learners out there. Maybe you're like, yeah, I know all these words, Michael, teach me something new. If you want something new, I feel like this one could be a contender. Bunged up. This is a phrasal verb now. Bunged up. It means the same thing, it means congested. Bung something up, I guess we could say, is to block something. So anything that's blocked, we could say it's bunged up. And yeah, that could be your nose, it could be the kitchen sink, it could be some kind of like pipe where there's a blockage, basically. It wouldn't be traffic here because traffic is not like, you know, it's not blocked, really, so to speak, it's not like a pipe that's blocked. Think of like water pipes and things like that. So I'm feeling bunged up, I need to blow my nose. Uh, the sink is bunged up, get a plunger to fix the bunged up sink. Right, and that, that is spelled B-U-N-G-E-D. Bunged, bunged. It's a bit hard to pronounce, I suppose. Right, and as I said before, I do kind of suffer from the man flu a little bit. So that's why I'm trying to do as much work as I can today um, in a nice way. I'm not pushing myself, but I'm kind of getting some work done. So that means if I get really sick tomorrow, I can just, I'll be honest, I'll just play games all day, right? Because <laughs> when I'm sick, the worst thing about getting sick, in my opinion, is feeling guilty about not doing work or not doing exercise or something like that. I kind of get guilty that I should be doing more. So what I tend to do is say, okay, for the whole of today, I'm not gonna expect too much of myself. I'm gonna play some PlayStation, relax, and rest my body, which I think is what it would want, right? So the word I wanna, last word I wanna teach now, kind of related to symptoms, is bedridden. Another fairly advanced word, because we don't say that word ridden very often, but bedridden means you're kind of stuck in bed. You have to stay in bed. So it can be an adjective. I am bedridden. You know, when I am sick, I get bedridden for days. Or the bedridden lady called for help. Right? So when I'm bedridden, I will move the PlayStation up into my room and play PlayStation in bed. That's what I like to do. But how about you? Do you have a similar thing that you do when you're sick? What, you know, what do you do? Do you go on your phone? Do you watch Netflix? When you're sick, let me know what is your routine. What do you do when you're bedridden? All right. Let me know in the comments. I'm also interested to hear what symptom you think is worse, because I think 
you know, it could be, you know, people can have varying opinions. My honest belief is that a blocked nose is the worst, right? I mean, if you have a sore throat, it's horrible. It hurts to talk, to swallow, to drink. It's really not a nice feeling, but I think it's much better than having a blocked nose. When you have a blocked nose, it's so hard to breathe. You have to breathe out your mouth, which hurts your throat even more. It's really difficult to sleep with a blocked nose. I really hate that feeling. So knock on wood, that means hopefully it won't happen. Knock on wood, I will not get a blocked nose, but we'll see in a couple days. <laughs> but yeah, how about treating an illness? Let, let's finish up now with getting better. Let's end on a positive note today. So what I do personally when I'm sick, as I said, I stay in bed, I rest, I relax. I might do some gentle stretches, but I do not do too much strenuous, difficult exercise. But I will do things, I try to like keep my vitamins up. I don't know if that helps. I heard that like, for example, vitamin C from an orange is useful for avoiding getting sick and strengthening your immune system. But I don't know if it really helps when you are sick. But honestly, one thing I kind of believe is that the, the mind is very powerful, right? So this isn't really based on science, as far as I know. Maybe there is some scientific evidence. But I kind of believe that your mind can affect how quickly you recover. And sometimes I feel like if you think positively and you, and you, you, know, you don't think about being sick, you can sometimes avoid getting sick, right? And I've heard other people say the same thing. And... You know, it's not something like, it's not a strong belief that I have, but it's some, I think there's something behind this idea of the placebo effect, where if your mind believes something, your body will feel it as well. And I think sometimes the opposite happens, where if you feel like, oh no, I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get so sick, it's going to be horrible, then you will definitely get sick. Again, you may disagree, this is one of my more you know, strange beliefs that I have. But when I feel like I might be getting sick, I do try to think positively and drink lots of water and not worry about it too much. And sometimes the sickness will quickly disappear. It could be because of the water, but I like to think it's because of the power of the mind. Who really knows? <laughs> so we have two phrases here. We have treat a cold and nurse a cold. It really means the same thing. These are both verbs, to nurse, to treat. And it's just what you do to make your cold go away, to treat an illness, nursing a cold. So for example, um, soup is a common one, right? Get some nice hot soup and bread. I think I'm gonna go for a walk and buy some soup in a minute, actually. There's nothing nicer when you're sick than having some hot soup and nursing your cold with a, a bowl of soup, in my opinion. I think that's nice. Um, it might be good to bundle up warm as well. If you bundle up, it means you cover yourself in blankets, bundle up warm, um, make sure you're not out in the cold for too long. One thing that I'll always do is buy, we have a drink in the UK called Lem Sip. I think Lem stands for lemon. Sip is the verb to take a sip of water. That's a sip, to drink a small amount of liquid. So it's, it's called Lemsip. I mean, there's other types, but the brand that I use is Lemsip. And I think that really helps me. It's like a nice lemon. Oh, it's not nice. It's a really strong lemon flavored powder that you mix with boiling water. And it also has some painkiller inside, which helps reduce your pain. And that seems to help me. You know, it really helps my voice as well. Um, obviously, I said before about staying hydrated and having a hot shower. I think having a really hot, steamy shower is so nice when you're sick, that really does help. And hopefully if you do all of that correctly, you will be on the road to recovery. Let's finish with this good expression here, on the road to recovery. This just means you're on your way to get better. You're on that road to recovery. 
So if you look after yourself, you stay hydrated, you rest up, then perhaps the illness will not last so long. And I think one really bad thing you can do is record too many podcasts. So maybe we should finish up here in a minute. (laughs) I hope that was interesting for you. I mean, there was a lot of vocabulary there. Some of you, maybe a lot you knew already, but I know some of you, maybe that was all new stuff and it was maybe a lot to take in so I would say if you want a summary of what I would recommend learning if if all of them were new I would suggest feel under the weather you learn that one uh congested is a harder word but as I said it has multiple meanings so learn the word congested I think that's good And then try to learn some of the basic symptoms of a cold. So let's say the basic ones are runny nose, we could say sore throat or a chesty cough, if you want to make it a bit harder, and fatigue, which is muscle weakness, fatigue. So those are the most important ones. The others are, think of them as bonus ones. But as I said, of course I am sick. I've mentioned it many times today. So if you didn't like this episode, please don't take it out on me. Please don't judge me. Please blame my cold. (laughs) And hopefully next time I'll come back to you feeling all better again. But before we go, you know I'm going to give you a quote to end. But before that, we've got two reviews from Apple Podcasts. Um, Whatever app you use, your reviews are really appreciated. I think we've got almost a thousand ratings on Spotify, which is amazing. So Spotify Uh, Ratings are appreciated as well. But one from the United States here, and this is from Adrian Golser, who says, Thanks. How about out? Can you show us verbs that end with out? Regards. Yes, I have a few requests actually suggesting this one. So phrasal verbs ending in out. Come out, go out. Do, do out? I can't think of any more. I don't think we say do out, do we? But there's many, many phrasal verbs that end in out. And I will make an episode on this. This is on my list to do in the future. I'm going to give it a break for a couple weeks now, just because we did, I think, two episodes on phrasal verbs already. So let's try to space them apart. But I will do this. Yeah, thank you very much for your review and suggestion. Another suggestion here from Vietnam, from Yen Canary, who says, I love your accent, but it would be great if each episode lasted 20 minutes max. 20 minutes? No, not going to do that. (laughs) No, I do appreciate your review and your opinion. But one thing I've learned about doing this podcast is you cannot please everybody. The podcast has changed over the years. We've done two episodes a week. We've gone back down to one. We've done shorter episodes, longer episodes. Whatever I do, there's always someone who says, you know, make it longer, make it shorter, do more, do fewer. There's always someone who doesn't like it. So I think the best thing that I can do is just do what I like. Uh, Recently, I don't know why, I've been going a bit longer, about 30 minute episodes. And I guess that's just because I have 30 minutes of stuff I want to talk about. I don't need to talk for 30 minutes, but that's just by chance how long it takes these days. So I think I'm just going to make episodes that I feel are the suitable length. And I really hope that's good enough. I really hope you enjoy it. But I'm sorry if I cannot make the right length of content to please everyone. But again, thank you for your reviews. And let's finish now with a quote from Thomas Fuller which is a really useful one. Health is not valued till sickness comes. Hmm, that's so true. We don't value our health until we get sick. I think the lesson to learn from this is when you are healthy, really, really don't take it for granted. Really appreciate your health. And even when you are sick like me, I've got a sore throat, yeah, but in so many other ways, I am healthy. I could be much, much worse. So no matter how sick you might be at the moment or not, 
it could be worse. So appreciate your health and appreciate that you don't have whatever you don't want to have. Okay. I'm, I'm not making I'm not making sense anymore. I'm getting too sick. So I'm going to end it here today. But thank you very much for watching or listening. And I will see you hopefully back to normal in the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.